Here's your weather video for the Sunday, July the 9th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray. Severe weather is a possibility across Alabama today. Lots to talk about, so let's get into the details. I'm showing you the day two severe weather outlook for Sunday as I record this video sun, or Saturday night about 11 or 1045. And um, we do expect this to look a lot like the day one will look in just a couple of hours when it comes out for Sunday. As you can see, a large part of central Alabama uh, they're uh, included uh, into South Central Alabama by the SPC in a slight risk. That is their level two out of five uh, risk area. The entire state of Alabama is uh, at least in a marginal risk. Those areas that are not in the slight risk, that's their level one out of five and indicates possibility of severe weather. Now let's kind of dig into the details here of uh, how this is all going to unfold and, uh, and look at what we uh, might expect. Um, the first thing that I'm going to pull up here is the upper pattern uh, across North America, showing a, a big low pressure system up in Canada near Hudson Bay, uh, trough digging down into the Great Lakes, shortwave trough digging around that coming through Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri today. That's going to be the disturbance that uh, triggers this round of showers and thunderstorms that we will see. We saw two such disturbances yesterday. But fortunately for the early morning disturbance, it was too early for there to be very much instability in place across Alabama. And we got off with just some nice thunder and rain, a uh, quarter inch to one inch of rain in some areas. Some wind gusts up to about 30, 35 miles an hour. And then there were persistent showers and thunderstorms that developed in the boundary all day across west central, south central Alabama. But fortunately, very few of those storms became severe. Uh, there were uh, some flood advisories and some things like that. Now, putting the upper air pattern in motion, we see that uh, disturbance moving through uh, the Tennessee and Ohio valleys into the mid-Atlantic and moving on out of our area uh, for early in the week. And then uh, that big heat ridge out there over uh, Phoenix, they're seeing temperatures well into the 110 degree range over their areas. You see this flat ridge of high pressure develops all across the southern tier states. Uh, through the week ahead, but uh, that disturbance begins to rear its ugly head up there in Canada again by the weekend, uh, breaks the ridge in two. Uh, we keep a ridge over the southeast and one over the west coast, and uh, a trough moves down into the middle part of the country, perhaps cutting off into an upper level low uh, by the weekend, and that could keep us uh, rather unsettled as we get into the first part of week two. But you see, uh, the high pressure begins to dominate again, puts itself back together, and uh, we get an even bigger ridge for parts of the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. That means warm and fairly dry conditions for us here in Alabama, uh, at least um, through much of that following week ahead. Now, I'm going to show you two convection, convection allowing models uh, on this Sunday morning because I think they both tell a good story and depict about what is going to happen. This is the HRRR uh, showing those showers and thunderstorms there back to our west. Uh, beginning to uh, push east into Arkansas by late morning. Uh, showers and thunderstorms developing over southern Tennessee. A few scattered showers and thunderstorms across Mississippi and Alabama here by 1 o'clock. And as we get into the afternoon, those showers and thunderstorms uh, continue to increase. And uh, the activity with the MCS moving in from the west is approaching the western border of Alabama sometime between 4 and 6, uh, moving into the uh, central part of the state there sometime uh, between 6 and 8 o'clock and moving on in into eastern Alabama there between, uh, say, 8 and 10 o'clock uh, tonight. Uh, showers and thunderstorms will be fairly widespread. They will be strong. They could be severe. The, the wharf showing about the same, uh, the same depiction, so I thought it was interesting to uh, show it. It did show a thunderstorm over uh, central Alabama early Sunday morning. Uh, we'll see if that plays out, but... The uh, main story is this MCS moving in from the west. Uh, again, timing pretty similar, right, 4 to 6 o'clock into the western part of the state. Looks like it'll be about 6 to 8 o'clock in the Birmingham metro area. And then weakening and moving on a little bit. But we've got a little bit of a boundary moving in behind it. Could have a few showers and thunderstorms late tonight into early morning, uh, Monday morning. We'll have to kind of watch that to see. Uh, if that plays out. Now what I want to do is take you over to the uh, to the uh, great pivotal weather site, one of our favorite sites. This is uh, the depiction of that. You can sort of see that uh, comma head look uh, to the MCS. 
and that'll be interesting to watch how that how that applies uh, as it moves into Alabama. But let's uh, take a selected sounding here from northern Tuscaloosa County. Uh, there about I think that was five o'clock tomorrow afternoon in advance of the uh, of the MCS, and you can see the algorithm predicts that we will deal with severe weather. That makes sense. Digging a little deeper, Cape values 2,500 to 3,000 joules. Uh, per kilogram, we know that that is um, substantial and, of course, can produce strong updrafts. Uh, no convective inhibition, plenty of moisture, 1.9 inches of precipitable water. And our bulk shear, um, effective shear, is about 40 knots. So we know that is plenty organized um, shear to you know, help these storms become severe. The good news is there's not much in the way, if any, of a storm relative helicity, uh, and that means very low, if not zero, chance of tornadoes. You have to always watch around that comma head, though, uh, in those MCVs. But damaging winds, that will be a real possibility, especially with some drier air at the uh, mid-levels of the atmosphere. Um, and with, you know, the parameters being as strong as they are with the lapse rates and stuff like that, um, location of the, uh, uh, of the uh, zero degree Celsius, the freezing level, uh, indicating some possibility of hail. That's something that we'll just uh, have to watch uh, very carefully. Uh, but it does indicate that we could deal with the threat of severe weather. That confirms it very well. Now, going back to the GFS and taking a look at the, uh, you know, the rest of the forecast period, including today, we start off kind of cloudy today. Uh, some areas got a little bit of sunshine. You'll have some sunshine during the morning. That'll allow temperatures to warm the middle and upper 80s, not the 90s like we've seen the last few days uh, because of those clouds and uh, the developing showers. But you can see that uh, massive rain and thunderstorms moving through Alabama on the GFS. Now, it looks like it gets on out of here by Monday. Maybe a few showers over southeast Alabama. We'll have to kind of monitor that for the forecast. But Monday looks like it's going to be a dry day across the northern and central part of the state, perhaps into south Alabama. The GFS forecasting that that boundary makes it all the way to the Gulf Coast. We could see low temperatures Monday night in the 60s across north and central Alabama. Boy, that'd be nice, won't it? But uh, that drier air uh, also has uh, a magnifying effect in the daytimes. We'll see temperatures moving back into the 90s uh, pretty quickly, probably 89 Monday uh, on average, lower 90s on Tuesday. Uh, it looks like Tuesday probably turns out to be dry, too. A few showers and thunderstorms perhaps over the southwestern part of the state. But it looks like by Wednesday that front has become diffuse. Uh, the atmosphere over Alabama is moistening up again. That should uh, lend itself to showers and thunderstorms uh, on the scattered nature. Rain chance is about 30%. Best chance is coming over western Alabama. High temperatures will be in the 90s on uh, Wednesday for sure. And then Thursday, it looks like uh, just widely scattered showers and thunderstorms, mainly during the afternoon and evening hours, about what we would expect for fairly typical uh, summertime weather in Alabama. We are watching a boundary to the north by this point, though. It looks like that could be increasing our shower and thunderstorm chances over the Tennessee Valley a bit, especially by late Friday into Friday evening. And then certainly Saturday, Tennessee looks like it'll be pretty wet. Scattered showers and thunderstorms across Alabama. But as we get into Sunday, those showers and thunderstorms are going to become more numerous over much of Alabama. And uh, perhaps we'll deal with a bit of some strong thunderstorms at that point, too. They continue into Monday and Tuesday, thanks to that upper low. Before the ridge begins to build, things begin to dry out. Looks like Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of the week two period, perhaps on even to the weekend, dry and hot across much of Alabama. Take a look at the tropics. Our friends out at uh, the Colorado State University, uh, Phil Klotzbach and his team, have upped their forecast for the uh, Atlantic hurricane season, now calling for 18 named storms, nine hurricanes and four major hurricanes. Could we see one of those develop this week? Well, certainly not early in the week. We've got a strong tropical wave there uh, making its way toward the Caribbean. It looks like it'll reach the uh, Leeward Islands there uh, around Tuesday and Wednesday. But look there in the uh, central Atlantic, uh, potentially a developing tropical storm there, well away from any land areas and no threat to the United States or anything but shipping. But you see we have a, a tropical or subtropical storm there in the central Atlantic by Thursday and Friday. Perhaps that'll become one of those 18 storms. We've already had three. That would make uh, number four. Uh, anything else I need to show you? Uh, rainfall amounts over the next um, two weeks 
looking fairly plentiful across Alabama, two to three inches in most spots, some parts of North Alabama hinting at getting some four to five inches of rain. Boy, that'd be nice because they've got some drought conditions up there. But uh, taking temperatures off the national blend of models, 80s today, 80s again on Monday, but we're quickly back into the 90s. We'll be approaching 95 to 96 degrees by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We should stay there all the way through the end of the 10-day period. Overnight lows will be um, in the middle 70s. Boy, we had a great conversation this past Monday night. Uh, Commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, Greg Sankey, his, his daughter, um, Hannah Strong uh, joined us. She's a TV meteorologist in uh, Louisville. And boy, it was just a fun and informative conversation. Uh, go back and uh, check that out. Weather Brains, uh, the weekly netcast that's all about weather. You can get it wherever you, uh, wherever you consume your podcast. Also at weatherbrains.com. Now, tomorrow night, Kevin Laws from the Weather Service in Birmingham is going to join us with a very special guest, someone who was an Alabama hero in the Selma tornado earlier this year. You won't want to miss that. We'll record it Monday evening, release it out into the wild late Monday night, and you'll have it by Tuesday morning wherever you get your podcast. Well, that's your weather video for this Sunday, July the 9th. Keep a very close eye on the severe weather threat today, especially if you're going to be out and about um, and enjoying the beautiful summer weather. Um, you'll want to uh, make sure you have a good source of warnings. Keep an eye to the sky. If any darkening skies approach your area, check your radar apps and uh, keep those uh, warning apps close at hand too so you can act quickly if uh, strong to severe thunderstorms approach your area. Well, James will be back two days tomorrow. Scott will see you next Saturday. I'll see you Sunday. And until I get that opportunity, as I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.